Those that run Clipper as their 3D printer firmware are probably familiar with Input Shaper. It allows you to use an accelerometer like this ADXL345 here to tune your printer, allowing you to print faster and with higher quality. Now, when it comes to actually running Input Shaper, the process of installing the ADXL and then getting all the firmware set up, while not daunting, if you have several different printers and want to run Input Shaper on all of them, or you want to tune it frequently, can be a little bit of a pain. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you compare your ADXL345 with a Raspberry Pi Pico as a secondary MCU, allowing you to quickly run Input Shaper on multiple machines via USB. So let's get started. So why use the Raspberry Pi Pico as a secondary MCU? Well, the first and easiest one, we no longer have to plug in our ADXL345 to the Raspberry Pi directly. So you're no longer having to flip your printer over, look for that Raspberry Pi, line up the pins, make sure you counted them correctly. If you do it wrong, you might short something out. USB connection is a lot simpler and a lot safer. And also, you can get an extension male to female cable. That way, you don't even have to flip your printer over anymore to get access to your Raspberry Pi. And why the Pi Pico? Well, it's low cost and it's available, which in today's day of chip shortages is a good thing. Now, at the time of this video, it's easy to find. They're about $5 Canadian right now. Um, but if they suddenly go out of stock in three weeks, please don't come yelling at me. So pairing these up is a relatively simple process. Uh, if you're familiar with connecting a Raspberry Pi to the ADXL standard, connecting the Pico isn't much different. So let's go over to the bench and get the wire harness made up. So if you take a look at your ADXL345, you'll see that there are eight pins available. Now I've already gone and soldered headers onto mine, so I'm gonna keep those on, uh, but for installing the wires to the Raspberry Pi Pico, I'll solder them, so I'll show you how to do that. But for the headers, I'm just gonna use DuPont connectors here to connect them. And with the eight connectors here, uh, you can see you have ground, VCC, CS, INT1, INT2, SDO, SDA, SCL. We do not need INT1 and INT2. So we need to connect six wires to this. And the wires that you connect to this and where they connect on your Raspberry Pi Pico um, will be in this handy diagram on the right of your page here. Ground and VCC are probably your two most important ones. If you connect the other ones backwards, it just won't work. But for VCC, um, most ADXL345s are 3.3 volts. So you're going to want to feed it 3.3 volts from your Raspberry Pi Pico, but some boards are five volt compliant. So you may wanna look into that and check your spec sheet just to verify. Now, you do not actually need to use a Raspberry Pi Pico. You can use something like an Arduino Nano as a secondary MCU. Uh, but with today's chip shortages and the availability of the RP2040 and its ease of use for setting everything up, we're gonna go with that today. But if you do want to use a different secondary MCU, the process is relatively the same. The wiring is a little bit different and the actual process of flashing uh, clipper on the secondary MCU will differ. Now for the wire harness, it doesn't actually need to be that long. It just needs to be long enough to essentially get outside the printer uh, and not have your Pi Pico hanging in the air. It doesn't need to reach all the way down to the Raspberry Pi underneath your printer, for example, because the Pi Pico will be connected to that via a USB cable. So, I already have DuPont connectors attached to one end of my wire run here. And for the wires, I'm just using an old ethernet cable. There's eight wires in here, they're color coded. It makes it a very simple, easy setup process. So for frequent viewers of my channel, I'm not gonna bore you with the whole process of stripping and crimping wires. If you watch my live streams, you've probably seen enough of those. And if you haven't, why not take the time to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of those in the future. Now for the Pi Pico here, since I'm pretty much just going to be using this for input shaper going forward, I'm actually going to go ahead and solder these wires to the Pi Pico. And then in the future, I'll probably get around to designing and printing a nice little case for it. So let's go ahead and solder these wires up. Now for soldering, um, I'm using a TS100 as my soldering iron with some MG Chemicals 6337 solder with rosin core. And I'm gonna be basically doing through hole soldering. So I've gone ahead and stripped my wires and twisted the ends. And we're gonna basically put each wire through the hole and solder it as a simple through hole. Again, make sure you are pairing up the appropriate wire connection from the ADXL to your Pi Pico. If you wire it up wrong, best case scenario, it just won't work. Worst case scenario, you're gonna get sparks and something's gonna break. Okay. 
and there we have it. Now after we got all our wires soldered on, uh, you can flip it over, get a pair of snips and trim off any excess wire that's sticking out of the back. Make it look nice and clean. And if you're unsure of your solder connection, you can solder from the back as well. Double check, make sure you got no bridges anywhere, no shorts. You can also double check with a multimeter if you wish. And now we can move on to everyone's favorite part, firmware. Okay, so firmware, it's everyone's favorite thing. Now for firmware, you're gonna need something to actually create the flash file for the Raspberry Pi Pico. And for that, we're gonna use my newly built Voron V2.4. Now I haven't installed Input Shaper on here. It's a brand new, fresh install of Clipper using the mainsail interface for this demonstration. First things first, you're actually gonna to wanna to make sure that you are fully up to date with your version of Clipper and your interface. The reason for that is you're gonna be flashing Clipper on this Raspberry Pi Pico and you wanna ensure it's the newest version because if this happens to be an old out of date version, you go to use it on a printer that's running a newer version of Clipper, it's not gonna work, you're gonna to have to reflash it. So just ensure you're installing the most up to date version of Clipper on the Pi Pico. And for flashing the Pico itself, it's a relatively simple process. Um, if you've installed Clipper before, you're familiar with the steps to get to the make flash command. So when we get to make menu config for the Raspberry Pi Pico, the setup for it is actually quite simple. We just need to ensure that we're not enabling extra low level configuration options. The microcontroller architecture is RP2040 and communication interface is USB. We save that and then make clean and make and let that run. Now, once we're done with the make flash command and we have our flash file done, we need to actually get this file right here, clipper.uf2. We need to get that off the Raspberry Pi and onto our computer. So we're gonna use WinSCP for that or any other FTP program. And we're gonna connect to our Raspberry Pi. Ensure that you're in SFTP mode and put in your username and password which again, if it's default, it's Pi and Raspberry. And then you're gonna go into the file called Clipper out. And there we have clipper.uf2. So we're gonna copy that file over to our desktop. And then we need to plug our Raspberry Pi Pico into our computer. But while you're plugging it into your computer, you need to be holding down the boot button. So on the Raspberry Pi Pico, there's a button. It's right by the USB plug. And above it, it says boot select. So just hold that button down as you connect the USB cable to it. And if done correctly, you should see it pop up on your desktop, pretty much like a thumb drive. So you're gonna take that clipper.uf2 file, you're gonna drag and drop it onto the Pi Pico, and it'll basically reboot, and now you've installed Clipper on it. So don't push anything else. Go ahead and unplug it from your computer, and now you're ready to go ahead and install it in your printer. Now I've gone ahead and installed a male to female USB cable here, so I don't need to flip this printer over. So if you plan on doing this on multiple printers, I'd recommend you get a bunch of these USB male to female connectors. That way you're no longer having to dig for your Raspberry Pi. You can just plug it in externally. You can design a nice little mount for it. And then we're gonna take our Pi Pico and plug it into the Raspberry Pi that's running our printer. Now, if all goes well, when you run the LS dev serial by ID command, you should see your controller board, which in my case here is the STMF32 powered one. But then we also have the RP2040. So that is our Pi Pico. It's talking to our printer and we're good to go and ready to move on to the next step. So for the next step, this is something you're gonna to have to make sure is done on any printer you wanna run Input Shaper, but you need to ensure that you have the dependencies for Input Shaper installed. You have NumPy and then you also have Matplotlib. Now, my printer already has these installed, but again, if you need to install these or update these, link in the description, uh, just run these commands from your terminal like putty here. Now, down here, when you get to the RPI microcontroller document, you do not need to do this. The whole reason we're doing this is to bypass having to use the Raspberry Pi that is running our printer as the MCU for the accelerometer. So now the Pi Pico is doing that. So we need to set it up accordingly. And this is how we're gonna go about doing this. And we're gonna set it up in a way so that we can easily copy this onto any other printer we plan on using this on. So we're gonna create a new file and I'm just gonna call it adxl.cfg. You could call it Pico if you want. You can call it whatever you want, really. Um, but since this is just gonna be used for adxl, I'm gonna just call it adxl, just so I know what it is at a very quick glance. Create. Now we're gonna go into that file and we're gonna to have to add some stuff to it. So 
I will have this in the description so you can just copy and paste it yourself. But this is what we're going to use for the configuration. Now, obviously here, the serial is the address that we're going to need. And this is the serial address for our RP2040. So copy that, put that there. Our pin right here, you don't need to adjust any of this. If you are using a secondary MCU that isn't a Raspberry Pi Pico, you're going to have to adjust, uh, obviously, these pins here. And then for our pro points, uh, make this the center of your bed. And there we go. Now, before we restart, just hit save and close. And you're going to go to your printer.cfg now. And you're going to add a line called include adxl.cfg. Now, if you named it something different, obviously it would be something different. Now we can hit save and restart. And there we go. So you can see we have our two MCUs connected there. And now we can do one more check here. This is just to ensure that everything is wired up with our ADXL345 and the whole system is working. And we can run this command here called accelerometer query. And if you get a value such as this, that means it's not working. Now, what can you do if that happens? That means something is wired up wrong. So what I've done is I've actually gone ahead and not connecting it fully. And as you can see, now we're getting correct values. So what I did there, I didn't have a pin in all the way. So it would purposely throw an error. Now that everything's hooked up correctly, we are getting proper values from our ADXL. Now we're ready to go ahead and run Input Shaper. Now there's already videos on how to run Input Shaper and how to run it on specific printers, bed flingers, Core XYs, et cetera. So I'm not gonna dive into that whole process now. But what I'm gonna show you is now, how do you do this on another printer? After you are done running your Input Shaper, you're gonna go back into your printer.cfg file and you're gonna go down to the line that it has include ADXL and you're just gonna comment out that line hit save and restart now we can unplug our pi pico and clipper won't air out so we can go ahead and plug this into another printer so you're going to go to your next printer that you wish to run this on you're going to ensure that you have numpy and all the other prerequisites for running input shaper installed this adxl file you're going to save this you're going to download this off this one printer here and then on the next printer that you wish to run input shaper on all you're going to do is upload this file you're gonna to have to get the serial ID of the Pi Pico itself after you plug it in. And then you just have to go to your printer.cfg file, add your include adxl.cfg line, and then you could just run input shaper on that next printer. And there you have it. Now you only need one ADXL345, a Raspberry Pi Pico, and a USB cable, and you can install input shaper on all your machines. It's easier to keep everything up to date. If you need to rerun input shaper on a machine in the future because you adjusted belt tension, just need to plug in your Pico via USB, connect your ADXL to the tool head, uncomment out a line out of your printer.cfg file and you're good to go. You're no longer digging out that Raspberry Pi and having to plug something into the GPIO header. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you do have any questions, ask them in the comments below. If you want to see more content such as this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out. And if you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. On your way out, make sure you like that smash button. And as always, I hope you learned something new today. Thank you and have a great day. Cheers.